Hi, it's Dwyer. January 10th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's just add our two cents to the public conversation, the narrative that's taking place. I hope you feel free to add your two cents in the comment section of this YouTube video. We are hearing that the Devin Haney Regis Progre fight did roughly 35,000 pay-per-view buys, which is a low number. So after hearing this news, Ryan Garcia has decided to move on from fighting Devin Haney towards Raleigh Romero. Right now, Romero has a belt. Romero also is one of the best talkers in boxing. Now, let's make a few points here. Eddie Hearn's upset. Eddie Hearn has said, gee, I thought that Ryan Garcia was all about legacy etc. Right? Let me make a few points. First, uh, in my opinion, and that opinion could certainly be wrong, I'm just one man here online, in my opinion the fight was high risk for Ryan Garcia. I believe Ryan Garcia would lose to Devin Haney. Haney is physically bigger. Even in the picture behind me, just look at Haney's hoodie and the fact that Haney has a core that's being hidden. Understand when the California Boxing Commission weighed Haney before his fight against Regis Progre on the day of the fight, Haney weighed 165 pounds. Now you should be concerned because that weigh-in took place in health conscious California. Right? You have a lot of states that don't do that day of the fight weigh in, right? You would imagine that Haney was on his best behavior for a fight in California. And even in California, Haney comes in weighing 165 pounds on the day of the fight, right? So Haney, some would argue, is what's called a weight bully. He's what I call a size guy, right? This is a guy who is masquerading at a lower weight let me just say, contrast that with Canelo, where you get the feeling that Canelo often is fighting bigger men, right? Canelo, who's not much bigger than, let's say, a Jermel Charlo, has titles several weight classes above 154, right? Now, Haney is the opposite. Haney is the guy who is bigger than you think. Don't go by the height of photos of him standing in front of Ryan Garcia. Go by the body mass. Go by the day of the fight weigh-in. Right? As I've mentioned here before, too, you have a whole group of fighters, Manny, Floyd Mayweather, who were fighting at their natural weights, if not above their natural weights. Right? As I mentioned here before, Floyd, when he fights Oscar De La Hoya, comes in low for the weight class. And we know De La Hoya was a guy who would rehydrate, as they say in the trade, before a fight. Right? The mindset for fighters who come in, you know, at their actual weight is that they have better punch resistance. When the stress of the fight starts to weigh on their body in the middle of the fight, their body will be able to react naturally, right? There hasn't been a lot of unnatural carb loading and all that other stuff before a fight after the weigh-in. Haney, the weight bully, would have also had a skill gap on Ryan Garcia. Let's just keep this real. Right? Garcia has a great left hook, but understand, he needs to be somewhat close to you to land it. And we know Haney has the better legs than Ryan Garcia. Haney has a mobile jab. 
Haney would be able to with movement. It's the movement that threw off Regis Progray. Circle Ryan Garcia and stay away from Garcia's obvious Sunday punch. That left hook. Right? And so my point to you is this was a dangerous fight for Ryan Garcia. Garcia had to ask himself, do I want to risk getting another loss? Am I being compensated enough? Garcia realized that the answer to the second question was no, because Haney can't deliver the box office, right? The pay-per-view. Now that brings me to my second point here. Ryan Garcia has something that the other fighters at 140 don't have. And that's his status as the box office king. This is different than actually being the champion. This might actually be more important than being the champion. Right? Understand. Ryan Garcia brings in fans. Fans want to know about Ryan Garcia. Fans want to listen to his interviews. Folks, there are very few box office kings in the sport of boxing. When you're a box office king, your brand is bigger than the brands of the other fighters. So, Ryan Garcia needs to realize and understand, in boxing, the truth is often hidden because the people around the fighter don't have an incentive to tell the fighter the actual truth. The actual truth is that Ryan Garcia, as a fighter, is still learning his trade. There are a number of guys at 140 who might be able to beat him today. Right? Jose Ramirez, who I keep mentioning here, has an aggressive front foot. He's going to be in your face. This is a guy who's held the title at 140. Right? He's going to be in your face. He's going to be forcing you to deal with his aggression. And he's a vet. So when he fights, or if he ever fights Ryan Garcia, he's going to know all about Ryan Garcia's left hook. He's going to get on Garcia like Oscar Duarte did. I thought Garcia, who started turning away from Oscar Duarte, had major problems with Duarte's aggression. He would have major problems with Jose Ramirez's aggression. You heard me mention that I believe Devin Haney wouldn't even have to get deep in the pocket to beat Ryan Garcia. He'd be able to stay away, stick a jab, use length, use height. Right? Even though... Ryan Garcia might be just a smidge taller than Devin Haney. Devin Haney can fight taller than Ryan Garcia. Right? Good luck getting through Devin Haney's jab. Especially when Haney has a lead in the fight and has no incentive to trade shots with you deep in the pocket. Another guy I believe who would beat Ryan Garcia is Richardson Hitchens. Now let me make a point here. If you're someone watching this video saying, who, who, that's the secret of boxing. You have some excellent fighters out there. Excellent fighters. Who the public doesn't realize would give the more popular fighters all they can handle. Right? Hitchens has an excellent jab. Hitchens is great from the outside. The secret to beating Ryan Garcia is to stay away from the inside and Garcia's left hook. You want to keep Garcia outside. You want to force Garcia to try to come find you. Garcia is flat-footed, doesn't move that well. Garcia is a slugger who, like Anthony Joshua is trying to figure out the boxing nuances of the sport. Hitchens is the boxer who already knows them. Right, so understand, 
Garcia right now has an endowment that the Hitchens of the world dream of having. The fans know him. The fans care about him. Right? Andy has a natural personality where in interviews, even as Garcia is coming across as a bit petulant, even as he is a bit disrespectful toward Hall of Famers around him who are actually trying to help his career, even as he's overvaluing his own talents in the ring and calling out other fighters, right? I know there's a group out there thinking to themselves, Ryan Garcia would be an easy fight for Devin Haney. What's he, <laughs> what's Garcia doing calling out Haney? Right, Garcia's not ready for Haney right now. As we watch Ryan Garcia interview, realizing that Garcia thinks he is and might be self-deluded. We actually care about Ryan Garcia. Life's unfair. Some fighters are popular. Right, Gervonta Davis out the ring at times in his life has been a disaster. But fans love him. We're willing to overlook the problems with some fighters. We look at Garcia mouthing off, we look at Gervonta Davis police reports, and we say, okay, this guy was young and careless. Right? Those guys have box office pull. The question is, who needed the Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney fight more? Garcia, who is going to get paid fighting Raleigh Romero, a fighter he can beat, a fighter who doesn't move well in the ring. So Garcia in that fight is going to have the foot speed advantage. A fighter who, let's face it, was getting tossed like a salad by Ishmael Barroso. Before Tony Weeks, the referee bailed him out, right? It's not like Raleigh Romero's on some great run, right? Understand, Garcia can get paid fighting other champs at 140. The question is, who could deliver this level of paycheck for Devin Haney at 140? It's an open question, right? So understand. Boxing's a for-profit sport. The promoters, the managers, they're not philanthropists. They're capitalists, right? The fighters need to realize that the lifespan of a boxing career as a fighter is relatively short, right? So the fighters need to get paid. If I'm Ryan Garcia, quite frankly, Raleigh is a much better choice as an opponent than Devin Haney at this stage of my career, right? The calculus is different if I'm Jose Ramirez. If I'm an older fighter who's already had the belt, who's already fought Jose Zapata, Josh Taylor, who's already had big fights, okay, then I can say, let me take on all comers, Right, Devin Haney, welcome to 140. I'm here when you're ready to make the call. Let's do this. But if I'm Ryan Garcia and I barely beat Oscar Duarte, let's stop kidding ourselves. Duarte could have easily won that match. I question the count that counted Duarte out. Duarte gets caught, no doubt about it. He hits the canvas, no doubt about it. But I thought he beat the count. I thought Duarte was giving Ryan Garcia all he could handle. Right? If I'm Ryan Garcia and the fans love me more than opponents do, the opponents know, hey, if I catch this guy, I'm going to win the fight. Right? I don't think Hitchens, for example, has any doubt in his mind that he beats Ryan Garcia. Right? I think Teofimo Lopez is more afraid of Sander Martin, a southpaw with legs who can move away from him. Then he would be Ryan Garcia, who would be in the pocket, 
with Teofimo. Right, so Ryan Garcia here needs to take care of himself. Let me offer some more unorthodox advice to Ryan Garcia. If you beat Raleigh Romero, if that fight happens and you beat Raleigh Romero, right, be content because Romero will be stripped if he doesn't fight Barroso, right? If you fight Romero and he's stripped and the title is not at hand, be content with that win while you sharpen your boxing skills. I wouldn't fight a champ at 140 until I'm truly ready to do so. If you're not ready to deal with a master in the pocket who has his own great left hook and who's a better boxer than you, don't fight Teofimo until you're ready. If you're not ready to try to hunt down a bigger man with a mobile jab, with better legs than you, who doesn't have to come deep in the pocket to trade big shots with you to beat you by a wide margin. Don't fight Devin Haney right now. Right, being the boxing champ gives you options. You want to look at Anthony Joshua, realizing that Joshua had a clear shot at the IBF title. Right? Philippe Ergovic is there. Philippe Ergovic's willing to fight anybody at heavyweight. Maybe not Jili Zhang again, but everybody else. Right? He certainly would love to fight a box office king in Anthony Joshua. Instead of fighting an unbeaten fighter who is the top rated fighter by the IBF, right? Other than, of course, the holder, Fury or Usyk. Joshua, knowing that he's bringing the box office with him, he's not depending on an opponent for the box office, Joshua pivoted to Nganu, a guy who will be having his second professional boxing match. That's a much easier fight for Joshua, and Joshua still gets the payday. Right? If I'm Ryan Garcia, that's who I model myself after. Right, Joshua is not in a rush for the next title. Let me say this too. If you're going to fight Raleigh Romero, you need to insist that Romero work with Barrazzo to keep the title for the fight. And you need to agree to fight Ishmael Barrazzo after the fight should you beat Raleigh Romero. And Ryan, you need to realize that's a tough fight for you. As good as your left hook is, your left hand might not be as good as Barrazzo's left hand. Right? Let me just point out, too, that let's say you beat Raleigh Romero, but it's a tough fight. You might want to then opt out of fighting Barrazzo. Give the title back. You would have won the title if a deal's worked out with Barrazzo before you fight Raleigh Romero. You will have won the title. You will have gotten the credibility of being a title holder at 140. But if you're not ready for a KG Southpaw with knockout power, Now might not be the time to fight Ishmael Barrazzo. You might want to give the belt back, quite frankly, while you work on your skills. In other words, 140 is shark-infested waters. It's flooded with real fighters. At this stage, if I'm Ryan Garcia, I wouldn't want to fight Regis Progre who just looked bad against Devin Haney, right? So Garcia needs to figure out who he is. He needs to walk the same line Anthony Joshua's walking. I don't see Joshua rushing to fight Zhili Zhang, for example. He needs to realize, hey, I'm the box office king. 
the public doesn't quite understand right now how dangerous Hitchens is. The public is equating me with fighters like Devin Haney, who might be able to outbox me and win by several rounds without outslugging me. Right? Garcia is the box office king of 140. He's not the champ at 140. He needs to realize that right now as he works through things. If I'm Ryan Garcia, I'm not sure if I'd fight Oscar Duarte again. Until I get the defense locked down a little bit tighter. Until I figure out how to hide my left hook. I mean, how long does it take fans to figure out that Garcia's left hook is a Sunday punch? If you're watching a Garcia fight, you don't have to know anything about boxing to figure that out by the end of the third round. Now contrast that with Jili Zhang's right hand, where Joe Joyce didn't realize that Jili Zhang <laughs> had that big right hand until the second fight, the last punch of the second fight. Think about that. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this video. Please, if you're going to say things like, hey, uh, champs must take on all comers, then you don't understand the financial side of boxing. You don't understand the risk involved. Right? Fighters need to pick and choose to maximize the prize they're getting for fighting. Right? This is about the money. This is about the sequence of your career, right? As I mentioned in an earlier video, Sugar Ray Robinson just flatly refused to fight Charlie Burley, right? Folks don't come out and say, I'm not fighting Charlie Burley. No, what they do is just never sign to fight him, right? Ryan Garcia right now, I believe he wants to be the best at 140. Folks, he's not there right now. Now, there are unknown guys at 140 who would give Garcia all he could handle. There's a 40-year-old at 140 who would give Garcia all he could handle. Garcia needs to realize that and he needs to pick and choose. Right? If Devin Haney's last fight only pulled 35,000 pay-per-view buys, then Devin Haney should not be his next opponent. There's simply too much risk in the ring for that to happen. He needs to pivot away, go for paydays against fighters who he has a better chance of beating. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.